Five in a four. No. It's not for it. It's not Samuel John. Yes, the John operation is, is well open. And it's great MPC. Yeah. Right. Any more corrections? Yes, Honorable. Yeah, I'm just look at column zero one nine. Uh, uh, where am I making? The spelling of the uh, is K W A S I. Then the Kwesi, it is K O C O E, not double E. Then column zero two one. The name at the top, the surname is K O C O E, not spelled double printed. Very well. Yes, any more corrections? Any more corrections, please? In the absence of any further corrections, the official report of Wednesday, the 20th January 2021, is hereby adopted as a true record of proceedings. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity. Mr. Speaker, I rise to raise a matter of great uh, concern to all of us. Mr. Speaker, it has to do with the new season of poop here and the worry. Sorry, the uh -huh. use of what? Mr. Speaker, the season of poop here, the tax, the new season tax. Mr. Speaker, this is ravaging. COVID-19, and one of the advice that we all have is to make sure that our interactions are all limited. And my worry is that uh, the 2 p.m. is exposing us. We are spending more hours here in Parliament and exposing ourselves more than I don't remember you out of order. the case. And I'm concerned about it. I don't remember you out of order. There are places for such matters when it gets there, you can raise them. But I have another now, very important second. Item number four, statement. There are two statements admitted to be read today. The first one is in the name of Honorable Kofi Adam on the plight of Kofi and Ponsensi, despite government and Ponsensi on all parties. Right on our speaker. I'm grateful for the opportunity to speak on a subject matter of pressing importance to my constituents and I. The Buem constituency falls under the Uchi region, one of the six newly birthed regions in December 2018. The Buem people are primarily a subsistence farming people who have stayed with cocoa farming as a primary source of income for a very long time. Mr. Speaker, the Buem constituency is noted for our quality cocoa. Mr. Speaker, the Ghana Cocoa Board secured a 1.3 billion US dollar facility to purchase cocoa beans for the 2020-2021 crop season. This facility was to assist Cocoa Board make upfront payment for cocoa beans that it purchases from cocoa farmers. Most of the cocoa farmers in Ghana depend mainly on the proceeds of cocoa sale to fend for themselves and their families and most importantly, to prepare new farmland next farming season. 
The proceeds of these sales pay their bills, ranging from school fees through domestic utilities to medical bills. Unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, this has not been the case for the last three months. Reports from my constituency and other constituencies in the cocoa growing regions is that cocoa farmers have not been paid by license buying companies for their cocoa purchase in the last two months. And even though we are just in the third month of the main cocoa season. Mr. Speaker, the grim nature of the issue becomes more apparent when I use the plight of farmers in my district as an example. In Buim, from just five LBCs, that is five license buying companies, farmers are owed 11,055,000 Ghana CD, representing 16,750 bags of cocoa beans purchased from them by these LBCs. Mr. Speaker, this situation defeats government's efforts at investing in the cocoa sector to motivate farmers to keep their produce in the country. Further in the Western North, Mr. Speaker, only Kajal Sourcing Company is currently paying for cocoa purchase from the farmers. This is because they have their own funds to do so. Even more worrying, Mr. Speaker, is the sad fact that some of these farmers have been plunged into debilitating health conditions with no funds to seek medical assistance. These farmers resort to loans that are usually accompanied by cutthroat interest just to provide basic needs such as feeding and clothing for their families. As saddening as this, Mr. Speaker, the latter should be of grave concern to this August House as it defeats the purpose of government's desire to curb as much as possible the smuggling of cocoa beans to neighboring countries. Increased smuggling will lead to reduction in the cocoa production tonnage and ultimately negatively impact the loan approved by Parliament. Some children of farmers in educational institutions that do not accept promissory notes from purchasing clerks have had to stay home since school resumed. Mr. Speaker, it is my considered view that if Parliament, which approved the syndicated facility for the purpose of purchasing cocoa for the 2020-2021 crop season, does not intervene to get Cocoa Board to release funds to LBCs to enable them pay the farmers for the cocoa beans purchased, the economic and health situation of these farmers and their dependents will further deteriorate. In the long term, farmers who are engaged in cocoa production will be motivated to practice the unfortunate smuggling of beans as the only way of survival. Mr. Speaker, I pray you to use your to direct the Ministry of Food and Agriculture, which has oversight cocoa board, which has oversight responsibility over cocoa board to immediately take steps to ensure payments are effected to cocoa farmers in Buem constituency and all other cocoa farming areas. It is my belief that this will go a long way to alleviate the distress and anguish my constituents are currently facing. Right on, I thank you for the audience giving me and the people of Wim constituency. Respectfully submitted. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Speaker, uh, unfortunately, we didn't get the benefits of the statement before being read. But my colleague Kofi Adams raised 
a very fundamental issue in the statement and I want to say it here and now that the information he had was inaccurate. Whilst he was on his feet, I checked the facts. And it is not the case that Ghana Cocoa Board has not paid LBCs. It is not. No, no, no. Please. Let, this is a very serious matter for economy. It's not just. Let, let's get serious, with all due respect. No, no, I am saying, Mr. Speaker, as, as we speak, because his point is that cocoa farmers in this constituency, in Western law, have not been paid. And he is saying that the LBCs have not been paid. We presuppose that cocoa board has not paid them. I am saying that as we speak today, that is not the case. So, Mr. Speaker, we've had situations that LBCs have received payment and have not paid the farmers. If that is their intent, let it come out. But if you say that it is Cocoa Board that has not paid, then, Mr. Speaker, it is important that he put it in the right perspective. But as it is today, as it is today, Mr. Speaker, no, no, BC can claim because I've checked. Mr. Speaker, I said I have checked. Mr. Speaker, he, you see, Mr. Speaker, we 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 don't need to we don't need to fight over this matter. When if 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 you have contrary facts, if Mr. Adams can tell us which LBC in which. Member, hold on. As alleged yes. that it has Honorable, not been paid, so that we know Honorable leader. it's not the case. Yes, I know what you will. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to refer my, refer my colleague to our standing orders on statements. Yes. Statement, that's order 72 where our standing orders clearly states that with the judges, Mr. Speaker, a member will make a statement of public importance. He said that contributions with regards to this statement will be restricted to the statement. Whereas I agree with the factual inaccuracy, even Speaker admits it, you could try to take steps to correct them. But what I'm saying, my worry is that, Mr. Speaker, this is not what he's doing. Because he's just saying that he's checked from who? Tell us, because when this uh, statement is being made, the person is factual and telling us where his sources are. If you are claiming that you've checked, tell us from who? So that if this house, maybe at the end of the statement, Mr. Speaker decides that a committee of this house should investigate this, then we'll be able to get your source that is telling you that that money has been paid to appear, to answer. But if you just make a general statement that your checks, without telling us who is telling you that they paid, it will be difficult. It will be contradictory, not only to our standing orders, but to even the, the, the rules of debate, because you are just making a general statement without any source. So, Mr. Speaker, I just wanted you to draw his attention to that. Thank you very much. Yes. Mr. Speaker, I, I think what uh, my colleague, the majority chief, minority chief, just said is not different from the very point I was trying to underscore. My colleague's statement was very general. He said two things. Buem, his constituency, LBCs have not been paid. Then two, in Western North, farmers have not been paid by LBCs. He didn't end there. He also added that it's as a result of refusal of Cocoa Board to pay the LBCs. Then he added that since we approved that syndicated facility. He is inviting Mr. Speaker in this house to ensure that that thing is done. I'm saying that I checked. For the avoidance of doubt, let me read aloud. And I wasn't making a comment on it. I just wanted to draw the attention of the House to those factual inaccuracies, which Minority Chief Whip agreed with. Mr. Speaker, this is what... What are you reading from? 
Mr. Speaker, this is uh, data from Kokobo that I am. Oh, honorable members, order. Yes, Want to listen to him? Yes. Mr. Speaker, this is information from Kokobo database which I saw. When I start reading, if there is the desire of the house, I will get it printed and send that. I don't have a problem. The maker of the statement himself has not even given us the name of the LBC that has refused Honorable to pay. Honorable member, I asked you a question. Very well, Mr. Speaker, so I, I, would, I want to read. Cocoa Board what? Mr. Speaker, the Cocoa Board information I'm reading from their, their, their database. Information their website? Put yes, please. Information well. that they put up. Very well. Mr. Speaker, their communication department. I would want to read 2020-2021 COCO Syndicate Chin Funding. Quote, in the 2020-2021 crop season, Ghana Cocoa Ball syndicated for 1.3 billion for the purchase of cocoa and cocoa related activities. Out of the full amount, a total of 1.110, equivalent of 6347174 has been drawn down with a balance of 190 million outstanding. Out of the 1110, 50 million was utilized for cocoa input purchase and syndication expenses with the 1060 utilized for cocoa purchasing and other related activities. A total amount of one billion five hundred and forty eight forty eight million seven hundred thousand was released as seed money to local buying companies from october 2020 to commence cocoa purchasing from cocoa farms for the first time in the cocoa purchasing operation no seed fund was released to foreign lbc's all foreign lbc's are mandated to source for funding for cocoa purchases in addition to the seed money released to local LBCs, additional amount of $4 billion has been paid to all LBCs after submitting invoices to Cocoa Board for processing, bringing the total amount to $5.6 billion. This represents 92% of total funds received from October to January 2021, with the remaining 7.52 used for other cocoa-related activities i.e. warehousing, sh shipment, disinfestation. So, Mr. Speaker, all that I'm saying from this, all that I'm saying from these facts, from the communication department of Cocoa Board, clearly they provided seed money for the local licensing, license buyers, and when they also raise invoices, they have also indicated they pay them. Mr. Adams, Maybe based on the information he's getting from a certain source. All I want you to know is that perhaps verify from that particular LBC who is in your constituency why he has not raised an invoice and don't connect it generally. Then you say Western lot farmers have not been paid. The, what you are saying has consequence on the international image as country. So I'm only basically telling you that let us know if there are specific LBCs. LBCs are limited liability companies. If they have been paid by Cocoa Board and they have refused to pay farmers, name them. Let's know which LBCs. So that specifically we can deal with it. Because these are serious matters. With all due respect, Mr. Speaker, so having that, that is not my... I am in agreement with the majority... Minority Honorable, Honorable I, Deputy Leader, please speak to me. Ignore the... Ha Mr. Uh, Speaker, I will do so. When it is too loud, it's difficult to ignore, but I will do not. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, all I am saying is that our rules, which was quoted by Deputy Minority Chief, the rule... the... the... the Major, minority chief, Honorable Muntaka Mubarak. The rule provides 
that by the indulgence of the house and the leave of Mr. Speaker, so Mr. Speaker, perhaps if Honorable Kofi Adams had fully complied after you granted leave, he had shared his statement with us aforehand, which would have satisfied the indulgence criteria, we would have assisted him to do deal with this inaccuracy. Because as it is, he himself did not even verify from Ghana Cocoa Board. He himself has not told us which LBC in Bue has not paid farmers. He has also not told us LBCs in Western North have refused to pay farmers. Yet he is here talking about the plight of farmers. And I'm saying that if you create this impression that Ghana Cocoa Board that came to this house Source funds from the international financial market has drawn down, giving returns of having paid farmers, has refused to pay. Mr. Speaker, this has consequences on our financial market. It has consequences on the image of this country. Anything to be dealt with lightly, give us specifics. Failure to do that, it becomes problematic. And that is all the point I'm trying to, Mr. Speaker, not by way of comment by way of drawing attention to these factual inaccuracies for the statement maker of the statement to perhaps come back to the House with further and better particulars of the basis upon which he anchored the statement. I thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Member for as soon as for South, yes. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Deputy Majority Leader, is misinterpreting the content of the document he referred to in this house. In that document, Cocobot alluded to the fact that this house approved 1.3 billion. And as at the time they were putting up out that information, they have not assessed the entire 1.3 billion and he indicated that 190 million is still as they have not still assessed that amount that explains their inability to pay for the cocoa that they have purchased mr speaker the reality is this the reality is this the syndicated loan is usually assessed before the opening of the cocoa season so when Cocoa Board assess the funds, they advance some of these monies to the LBCs. That is what money. For them to purchase the cocoa and then submit, send the cocoa to Cocoa Board. Now when they submit, Cocoa Board will give them another money for them to go and buy. What is happening now is that they don't have the money, so they go to the farmers, credit the cocoa, send the cocoa to Cocoa Board with the invoices waiting for Cocoa Ball to pay them. And because Cocoa Ball has not been able to assess the entire amount, they are unable to pay the farmers. I myself, I spoke to Cocoa Ball on this matter. And I'm telling you that the explanation Cocoa Ball is giving to this situation is that because of the COVID situation and other uh, emergencies, they are unable to assess the entire 1.3 billion. That is why they are not paying for the cocoa that they have purchased. Now the issue have been raised on this uh, in this very house by our colleague so that we can invite the Minister of Agriculture to appear here to indicate to us what measures are being put in place to resolve the matter. The situation is that it is across the nation. Every cocoa region, farmers are sovereign, whether they belong to the NPP or the NDC. They send the cocoa to the purchasing plants, the cocoa is waived, they are unable to get their money. That is the situation now. So the honorable colleague is drawing the attention of this August House as representatives of the people to take note of what is happening on the ground. Honorable Afonio, you don't come from a cocoa grown area. So you are not addressing the issues. You are calling behind you. You are calling behind you. They know. They know the issues. Mr. Speaker himself is from a cocoa growing constituency and he understands the issues better. Uh, so don't, member for yes, don't, Can you leave me out facts. of the debate, please? Don't dilute the facts. Mr. Can Speaker, the reality is the that debate, farmers are not being paid. And he's urging this House. 
is urging this house to bring Eswinafosa constituency, Eswinafosa of SUTP, all over. We come from cocoa growing constituencies. If you don't have any idea about cocoa, this is not about MPP or NDC. It's about our own comments. So, Mr. Speaker, the issue is that the honorable member is not speaking, is being economical with the truth. The truth is that our farmers are not being paid. Honorable member, honorable member person for the honorable member of quarreling about farmers paid or not. His argument is that Cocoa Board has released money to their VCs. That link is what he's complaining about. As for farmers being paid or not, I don't think that he was raising that issue. But whether Cocoa Board has given the money to the LPCs, we are not using it to pay the farmers. But let the debate continue. Mr. Speaker, as we speak today, Cocoa Board is still owing the LPCs. Mr. Speaker, sometimes, sometimes we ask our colleagues not to muddy the waters for themselves. Even the foreign companies, Cocoa Board last year couldn't pay all the cocoa that they delivered to Cocoa Board. Cocoa Board is still owing them. But we are talking about the local LDCs. Cocoa Board has made some payments to them, all right. But it's not enough to pay for the cocoa that they have delivered to Cocoa Board. That is the issue. So you don't stand here and be talking about Cocoa Board has paid them. I see Cocoa Board is doing. We are even owing the foreign companies. The deputy is aware. I mean, when Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I am happy that my leader, Honorable Afenyo, has put out facts. These are credible facts. You can check, cross check. Mr. Speaker, this is from Kokobo. I never mentioned any institution. Mr. Speaker, this is from Coco Board. I'm surprised my colleague, Anabo Eric, is making some assertions that are inaccurate and misleading. Mr. Speaker, Coco Board in 2020 went for $1.3 billion. Out of this out of this amount, Cocoa Board, by January 2021, had released 5.6 billion Ghana cities to the LVCs. Mr. Speaker, the practice is that when LVCs go carry the beam, they have between 15 to 30 days to, re to raise invoice for them to be paid. I want to ask my colleague, at what point, today is on the 3rd, 3rd of February, if at the end of January, 5.6 billion have been released to LBCs, at what point did the LBCs carry those beans and raise those invoices that covered the 15 to 30 days that they, they have to be paid? Mr. Speaker, we don't have to, as a members of parliament, make certain comment that put a dent on the image of the country at the international front. He's making allusion that Cocoa Board have gone for money and they have used the, the speaker. He said it. And I want to quote. He said, Mr. Speaker, it is my considered view that if Parliament, which approved the syndicated facility for the purpose of purchasing cocoa for the 2020-2021 crop season, doesn't intervene to get or to release funds to LBCs to enable them to pay the farmers for the cocoa being purchased. Mr. Speaker, as if they received the money. Mr. Speaker, the fact is that any time Cocoa Board go for this syndicated loan, they don't pay all the money to them at, at a go. They draw it at a point in time. There's a drawdown line that they have given to them. And they are, my colleagues on the other side, are they aware? We've been in government before. Fortunately for us, we have been in government before. They did it. They know. When they were in government, 
Nothing has changed. Honorable member, that can you address some of the views? Mr. Speaker, um, leave it out. Boko Board has indicated that within this month, they are going to draw down the remaining balance. The $190 million which is left. And that is what they will use to pay any LBC, the subsequent one that submit invoice. Mr. Speaker, the maker of this statement has made some comment what allegations against Coco Ball. And this is a house of records. We don't need to allow this allegation to stand in any of our proceedings in this house. Coco Ball is a public, is a government, is a public institution, government institution. They can't hide any documents from this house. And I will urge that Mr. Mr. Speaker with your direction that we can even call for details of this docu documentation, this fact that we are putting out here so that this attitude of every time dust. trying to dust. muddy the waters, throwing dust in the eyes of Ghanaians, the eyes of Ghanaians creating some kind of unnecessary among us will stop at a point in time. This is, mis this is a point of them misinforming the public. The public. The unsuspecting public. You are the ones that you have been informing them. The speaker, with this U.S., I want to end Thank you. Thank you. Honourable members, can everybody resume your seat whilst I give this announcement after that? Honourable members, the officers undertaking the COVID test have up to 4 p.m. to leave the presence of Parliament. Thus far, about 50 members of Parliament and staff have not submitted to the test. I'm please requesting any member or any staff who have not submitted to the test to please do so immediately. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, we should draw the attention of members to the House that some members of Parliament who have in fact tested positive to the COVID are still coming to the chamber. And the speaker wishes me to inform that if those members do not withdraw and isolate, he will be forced to publish the names of members who have tested positive in order to warn the rest of us. Please, let's, let's take this protocol seriously and let all members who have been informed of their test results that they have tested positive withdraw from the precincts of parliament, not just the chamber. Stay home and self-isolate, go through the protocols and recover before they return to the house. I thank you very much. Yes, Honourable Deputy Leader. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on, on the issue of the COVID test, Mr. Speaker, it is important that we don't abandon a procedure that has served us well in the past. Mr. Speaker, what is it? After the test, our medical director talks to the whips on their side those who have tested positive. So you assist you keep the confidentiality, but you assist the members to stay out. Then you also know them as whip to help them stay away. Without necessarily telling, for example, Honorable Anodon Prayer, who is the whip for majority, the members on the minority, or telling me, Muntaka, the members on the majority. But members on Masa, I need to know.
so that I can help the House ensure that these members are not only also not in their offices. So I hope that this will be there. And secondly, Mr. Speaker, all of us, those who are taking the test, even where it is negative, it is important that that report, that sheet, is given to every member. You just don't keep quiet and tell me that if I'm not called, that means I'm negative. If it is only when you are positive that you be called. No. The, the, the result of the, report, uh, the test must be issued to every member so that I can know that but if they call me, I didn't pick. And yet they keep calling me and I'm not. Give me, as Muntaka, the results of my test. Negative, so that I can keep it. But not to keep it to yourself and say that if you don't receive a call, that means you are negative. If you receive a call, then you are positive. But if I don't pick my call, I believe that if we do, we streamline this, it will help not only the whips, but it will help the whole house to be at more calm. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Yes, Honorable Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, as you indicated, <laughs> the speaker, as, as the speaker indicated, as the speaker indicated last week, as of last week, Friday, 60 of the members, not members and staff, 60 of the MPs have not submitted themselves. And it was what occasioned our recalling the uh, technical people to come back. The speaker, yesterday, only five people submitted themselves. Yesterday, yesterday, only three people submitted themselves. Today, only five have. So it means that out of the 60 that have not submitted, 52 have still not submitted. And that is the danger. I do know for a fact that a couple of us have submitted at some private institutions, some private health facilities. Uh, I'm not too sure of the number. But I do know of um, at least three who have shown their test results to me. That still will not exonerate the remaining 52. The speaker, it's important that we submit ourselves. They were to leave at three, and I've pleaded with them to stay up to 4.30. And they said to me that they can only stay up to four. So I've pleaded with those who have not yet submitted themselves to please exit to go and submit themselves. Many of the staff have also not submitted themselves. And some of the journalists with us have also not submitted themselves. As you can, let me plead with everybody here, staff, members of parliament, and journalists who have not, who have not, please submit yourself. And as the speaker said to us, if you don't, in all likelihood, from next week, as the speaker insisted, we will not allow people who have not submitted to be in the chamber. And perhaps for the staff not even to be in your various offices. So, Mr. Speaker, it's a very serious matter, and we should all take the announcement very, very seriously. I thank you very much. Sorry, are we discussing COVID? No, I want to return to Goku Boat. Right? Yes, Honorable Leader. I wanted to get an indication on the statement how many you were taking from both sides. So we can, we can, we can. Let me be guided by the leadership to so confer and advise me. Maybe we've done, we've done two, two already. If you could, yeah, we've, we've done, done one. They make out the statement, and then uh, our other came. Right, they, right. Yeah, so, yeah, two. so we've done two, two already. So if we could do maybe additional two, two, then come to the leaders. Very well. Yes, yeah. yeah, leadership. What the suggestion is that four from each side. We've done two already. We allow two more. Mr. Speaker, I, I don't know the number of statements that you have. 
If you are, yesterday the speaker allowed for just two comments from either side. Not knowing the, the number of statements, I don't know what um, to say about it. I accept to say that if we have more than one the speaker, then I guess you can allow for two more, including that from other side, including leadership, so that we can move on. Because we need really to also discuss the, um, the standing orders. We need to move into a committee or the report. The report. The report. You're not going to discuss the report. Anyway, Mr. Speaker, my, my, my thinking is that you can, if two, two have spoken on either side, you can allow for two more from either side, including the, the, the leaders. Yes. <laughs> I'm not a member for Tamale. Is it not? Tamale not. <laughs> Thank you very much, right, Honorable Speaker, for the opportunity to contribute to um, the statement that has been ably made by the Honorable Member for Buem. The Speaker, I start with a note relating to how the statement seemed to have just debate when statements usually, as a speaker, are not supposed to generate debate. The speaker, on that note, therefore, I want to call on all of us to perhaps begin to shed from ourselves the campaign fever with which we came into this chamber with and desist from the mentality of we against them all the time. Mr. Speaker, I have gone through the statement, and the statement raises very germane issues that affect cocoa farmers, not only in the Buem constituency. Mr. Speaker, I have also listened to the Honorable Member of Parliament for Esunafu, Sat. Honorable Eric Opoku confirmed that indeed there are cocoa farmers who have not received payments. Mr. Speaker, I've also listened carefully to the debate on the majority group side, give the indication that indeed Cocoa Board has made some payments, but not all payments. I also listened to the former Deputy Agreed Minister try to take us through the processes that lead to payment, which also, in a way, confirm that as it stands, it is possible that some farmers may not have received payment even though cocoa beans may have been delivered. So, Mr. Speaker, as a house that our constituents, if what the maker of the statement is calling for is that we come together to find out why the syndicated loan was approved by us, yet in the process of disbursing this, we still have bottlenecks in relating to whether or not farmers have been paid. I think, Mr. Speaker, the right thing to do through our contributions is to present us, have been presented, the facts as we know them, agreeing, however, that the facts as we know them do not address the issue of farmers not being paid. And so together, what do we do? So it does not become a me or we against them debate or discussion. It becomes a collective collaboration of what we all know. How to Together we can use what we all know about the situation to resolve the crisis and help the poor farmer. Because, Mr. Speaker, it is correct that Cocoa Board regulates the PBCs. So even if there is proof that Cocoa LBC, sorry, even if there is proof, Mr. Speaker, that Cocoa Board has released funds to the LBCs, and yet there is evidence that 
farmers have not received that payment. To raise that issue is not an indictment on Cocoa Board and by extension government. It is a call for Cocoa Board and all those responsible to regulate the LBCs and ensure that the farmers are paid. And we as members of parliament should be seen to be calling for that to be done and not to be arguing among ourselves as if to say that it was a, a, a battleground to defend positions. So, Mr. Speaker, my contribution to this is simple. Let us come together on this through our contributions and find out from Cocoa Board how come, if they indeed have released all funds to LBCs, farmers have still not been paid. I think that is more progressive and that is more rewarding for this nation. I thank you for the opportunity. Yes, Honorable Member for Ablekuma West. South. West. West, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is to the statement, but um, to seek clarification from your good self. I believe that yesterday, the Honorable Speaker made an assertion that it is imperative on those who make statements in the House to share copies with members on the other side so that we can all contribute effectively to the statement. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, when we were all registering for Parliament, this eighth Parliament, we were all given Parliament's email addresses. It is easy to share those statements to all those addresses or those who might be interested in it so that when we come to the floor of the House, we would have prior notice of the statements that have been made and would have had some inkling as to what was coming and make informed contributions to it. I believe that if prior to discussing, uh, to even making the statement of, on the House, we have an opportunity to discuss it, Thank the you, maker Mr. of the statement would know that there was information on it. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, this is such an important subject that it would have served us better if the maker of the statement had asked a substantive question of the president's representative to the Ministry of Agri, so that he would come to the House and give a full statement on the disbursement of the syndicated loan and whether or not there were lapses in the work of the LBCs so that we could all have the benefit of it. We may all contribute to it from a position of using our own minds and not having benefit of the real facts in the matter. And that would not serve as well and our constituents as well. So, Mr. Speaker, I would urge of advantage of the tools that we have at our disposal to enable us to do our work as members of Parliament more effectively. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes. Honorable Minority Chief. Thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise to contribute and to commend my colleague, Honorable Kofi Adams, for making this statement. Mr. Speaker, Honorable Sweeney from Tamale uh, North have said it all. If all of us who concentrate on trying to serve our constituents and move away from we and them, it will do us a lot of good. And Mr. Speaker, to just add on what my colleague, Honorable Asla, also said, if the office of the Speaker could also be taking not only the hard copy, but the soft copy, so that once the Speaker admits the statement, the usher of Mr. Speaker will get it sent by email to all of us, because it is just going to be with just one by and every one of us will have it so that it becomes easier. Because the time that we move from conclave to the chamber, when a member is told, speaker has admitted your question, is too short. And I could remember when I came in, I was struggling to get them to run copies, and they couldn't run enough. Only about few that I had to give it to the whip opposite and uh, the deputy leader. So, speaker, I've said this. So, speaker, I want to urge my colleagues to call their constituents, to call the LBCs that they know, to call petition clerks that they know. They will know that this is really a problem that 
is currently facing cocoa Hut. We need to admit and find out from cocoa Hut what is their real challenge is. As we got the statement read by the deputy leader, it's accurate. In cocoa purchasing, for those of us who have worked within the, uh, the industry, you always need seed money. The seed money is like capital. What uh, local people, where I come from, from Masri, we say Jetri. You need to turn it around. And in fact, the efficiency of the company depends on how many turn around you've been able to do. And many of them will tell you that if you take the seed money from Cocoa Board and you are not able to do at least 2.5 turn around with that money, you may be running into losses. So for example, Mr. Speaker, if you look at Cocoa Board itself, with the estimated 5.6 billion that they, they, they anticipate to use, it cannot buy the 850,000 metric tons that they are targeting. Because if you multiply a bag of cocoa at 600 times 16 bags, that like gives one ton, times 850,000 metric tons, you will need close to 9 billion to procure that quantity of cocoa. Yes. Yet, they are using this seed money yes. with the hope that they will turn it around minimum. Cocoa board target is that they will turn it around minimum 2.0 to be able to use money to purchase this 850,000 metric tons. So, it is about speed and turning the money around so that it is not just money that you just give, you just go and buy once and then that's the end. No, that's not how the operation is done. And you find out from L a lot of the LDCs, they will tell you that even when Cocoa Board gives them the seed money, they go on to banks to take additional funding to be able to, to turn and move very fast. Currently, the challenge that they are having is that they, they produce the cocoa, and Cocoa Board is not able to reinvest them to go back to the field to be able to, to purchase the, the, the more of the cocoa and bring. And that is why they are in the challenge that they have. And Mr. Speaker, this is very simple because the license buying companies, that's the LBCs, they have a secretariat. And this house can simply invite the secretariat. And I, I know their secretary general, one Mr. EC. They can, we can invite him and invite Coco Board. He will come and tell us the situation from the LBC end. That's the license buying companies. One Coco Board tells us the situation from the Coco Board and tells us. Hold on. Are you on a point of order, Honorable Member for Tema West? Yes, Mr. Speaker, I'm on a, on a point of order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for your opportunity. Mr. Speaker, I think that my colleague from the other side is arguing uh, from a point which is, uh, I would describe as a non-informed position. Mr. Speaker, as a member, a former member of the Cocoa Board Board, who happens to be a chairman of COSMAC, which is the Cocoa Sector Marketing Committee, which regulates and licenses LBCs. I can say on authority that the seed fund that is given to these LBCs is only an initial fund for them to turn around. Every LBC, before you're qualified, you're supposed to bring a letter of guarantee from the bank that you have that amount of money that you're going to use to trade. In fact, it is a prerequisite if you don't provide Hon a bank statement, Honorable, which shows... So tell me what he has said. So what he said, it. which is not correct, is that they, they need to take... It's a seed money they need to use or they need to turn around in the trade. But no, they're supposed to have their own money. The seed money is only an initial funding which uh, Cocoa Board provides for the LB squad to wait for their bank money. Meanwhile, we make sure that either you provide a bank statement showing that you have the amount touchdown or you have a bank guarantee from the bank stating that they are giving you the amount of money. So the seed fund Very is well. not what you are supposed to use to Your take. point is well made. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, I'm only there. I'll take that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Speaker is talking about how PBC operates. The Speaker, the LBCs have to have a bank guarantee, as he's talking about. So every money Cocoa Board gives you, you have a bank that is saying that, should you lost that money, they will be there to pay, or should you, should that money get lost, or run, you run into loss, or there's some accident, they, the bank, will stand in for you. And before a bank will give you the guarantee, you need to put in collateral. 
and other properties that you have. Not that you have their money. If you have their money, you don't go to Cocoa to collect money. That's why most of the foreign companies do not operate with a, a Cocoa Bot seed fund because of the cumbersome nature of applying for it. They take their own money, buy and supply, and expect Cocoa Bot to just pay them outright. But our local uh, companies, the uh, LBCs, many of them do not have that capital because the speaker, their operation involves billions of cities. And so, Mr. Speaker, and like I was saying, if we could get the LBC, the last bank company secretary, with Cocoa Bot to come to this house and brief us, we may be able to help resolve the challenge. Because, Mr. Speaker, currently, the challenge that you are having is that before I came to this house, I was in the cocoa industry. I was working for one of the LBCs. And yes, and PBC, the produce buying company, which is the government fully owned, was the largest, uh, uh, what do you call, LBC. That's the largest buying company. If the story is not the same today, because each time cocoa is having challenges, they even suffer more. But remember, this is fully owned by the, the state and employs virtually 100% Ghanaians has a lot of warehouses across the country, a lot of facilities. So each time they do not have enough money to, pro, uh, to buy cocoa, all these persons go unemployed. Because in most of the situation, the purchasing clerks are not paid salary. They run on commission. So the more cocoa you are able to buy, the more money you are able to make. And so if there is no money to buy cocoa, what you simply do is that you lose money. Same with the local uh, LBCs. You see that in the maker of the statement, he raised, uh, uh, he said that it was only Cadell, one of the foreign companies, that is currently buying in the Western region. Yes, these foreign companies, they don't operate using the seed fund from Cocoa Bot. And the fear is that if we don't correct these challenges, what is going to happen is that we will gradually be handing over the industry into the hands of foreigners who will just come, they have enough resources, they will not look the way of seed fund they will just go in and buy all the cocoa. And then our compatriots, well, in 1993, we decided that we should liberalize the, the, the cocoa industry and decided to give our own local people license to be able to participate in the industry. All of them will be lost out. If a foreigner comes here to buy, you don't expect him to keep all the profit here. He will repatriate his profit. And who loses? In the end, we'll be having the cocoa trees here. Already, we all know the challenges. In terms of the uh, uh, value added, we are the last. If we allow the operation in uh, Peterson, that one to, to be hijacked by foreigners, we should know there will be more unemployment on our side, there will be more challenges facing our youth and our farmers. Because one other effect that is affecting the farmers currently is that because I have produced cocoa and I've given it to a purchasing clerk, but he's not been able to get money for me. In the local settings, they go on to borrow. And Mr. Mr. Speaker, you know, whether in Bekwai or New York, DBRC, in Asante region, where I'm very familiar with how the, the farmers and the purchasing clerks operate, he will give him the money, but at 100% interest sometimes. So by the time the money comes, the farmer will end up losing. The 100% interest, uh, is it from your personal experience? The 100% interest, are you speaking from your personal experience? <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I won't talk about my personal experience with 100%. But what I know is that they will give this loan to them at an exorbitant interest rate to the extent that by the time the money is paid, the farmer loses out completely. He or she may not be able to... The very farm that have produced the cocoa, because if you are a farmer, like my senior brother and colleague from Seri also, Dr. Efri, will tell you, yes, the income comes. But portions of it is to go back into the farm in terms of buying fertilizer, in terms of uh, pruning, uh, uh, weedicide uh, control. If you don't do that, your yield the following year is going to go down. So if they are selling their cocoa and they are not able to get money because of the challenges, whatever challenges Cocoa Bot is having, it's indirectly in the industry. And I think we need to be able to find out for Cocoa Bot what genuinely is the challenge. Why are they not able to quickly pay back uh, the release money to the LDCs to continue the operations and we are finding ourselves in, in this uh, situation? Mr. Speaker, let me end by saying 
that this is a very important statement that I would really gladly, Mr. Speaker, be happy that you do not let it remain just as a statement, but let's get Cocoa Board and probably, like I said, the license buying company secretariat to tell us exactly what the challenges are and what Parliament can do to help because truly, truly, our citizens within the cocoa growing area are really feeling the pain of non-payment from the LBCs and the LBCs are complaining that, look, I've sent so much cocoa to Cocoa Board and they are not able to uh, 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 give me back the money to control, to, to control the purchases. With this, I once again thank the maker of the statement and hope that Mr. Speaker will act to help save this situation. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Honourable members, uh, the last one is for the leadership, unless the leadership decides to refer to him. Yes, Dr. Koko Farmer. Mr. Speaker, thank you for the opportunity. And let me somehow commend the... Uh, I say somehow because uh, I do not get the government of this statement. Yes, there are some difficulties in the cocoa sector as far as payments are concerned. But most of them are even administrative and is limited to one or two cocoa LBCs. So I'm speaking from personal experience. I deal with four LBCs. Three are paid and I was surprised that a Western not was cited. It is not a widespread phenomenon. But actually, what is lost on this house is that there is even an international dimension to this phenomenon. Right now in Cote d'Ivoire, farmers are having a hell of a time selling their cocoa because of our new, if you like, now uh, uh, this COVID situation. And we, Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire, got together, got the act together, and they said that we were going to help farmers. So we cobbled, an, uh, an idea was cobbled, and we had this LID, Living Income Differential. Apparently, certain companies do not want to comply, and they are finding difficult or sub, uh, uh, some, they are using substitute uh, 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 not to pay the L, uh, LID. In the Ghanaian situation, we are in even a better situation. So I tell you that if Honorable Kofi Ahmed is worried about smuggling of cocoa across our shores, that will not happen. Indeed, if we do not take care, we will be inundated with substandard cocoa from our neighbors. That is the phenomenon now. Number two, like I'm saying, a, a lot of have uh, contacted cocoa board because I, I, I anticipated that a statement will be filed. And it's unfortunate that this statement was not circulated for us to study. And that is why Honorable Oslo's uh, intervention is very apt indeed. The Speaker, next time we should all have that kind of, uh, you know, situation where we can, uh, what do you call it, uh, contribute meaningfully to statement. Because like I'm going through this statement, I do not uh, pass in it. I do not see what the maker of the statement wants to uh, or intends to do. Because my, my uh, contact with Cocoa Board says that about 90% of the syndicated loan has been over, has been drawn down. And indeed, they also face another policy challenge. When LBCs were set up, it was meant, at least in spirit, for Ghanaian companies. Right now, they are being supplanted by foreign companies. That is another tall story, and it's feeding into this. Again, the LBCs, they have, they, some of them, I do not want to mention their name, they have their own problems. So every money is released to them, do not go to the cocoa farmers, we, and one of them who are not paid, that is the real situation. And it has nothing to do with cocoa ball per se. So we should make sure that we get our funds together. Mr. Speaker, before I take my seat, I want to make this request that in the cocoa industry, we are, because of COVID, there is going to be a glut. 
And so Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire will have to look at the hard land use policy and whatnot. I've always made that statement that cocoa used to be a middle class family industry. Now it's a poor classes. That are children that does buy here in Brazil, they've opted out. That's why Indonesia is opted out. That's why Malaysia is opted out. And it's exploitation, not of child labor, but labor. That, in essence, it is what is playing out. This is only a microcosm, and it has been exacerbated by COVID. So to summarize, this statement that has been made is a mixed picture. Yes, some farmers have not been received and have not received their money is due them, but they are grossly wrong, and Cocoa Board, by and large, even though they have their own difficulties, have by and large decided their duties. But on the international horizon, we have a great difficulty, and we should brace ourselves for a Cocoa growth on the international market. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable members, I will the leadership of Cocoa Board to brief the House at the Committee of the Whole to be determined by the leadership of the House. So I direct that the leadership of the House shall invite Ghana Cocoa Board to meet and brief members of the House at the Committee of the Whole on this matter. Thank you. The next statement is by the Honorable Williams Okoto Date, the Honorable Member for German South. It is on state of deplorable rules in German South. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, uh, my name is Williams Okoto Date, MP German South. Honorable Member, thank you for correcting me, but this is your statement, is that right? What you gave to Mr. Speaker, which just forwarded to me, is Okoto. So please make sure the next time you spell your name correctly so I don't pronounce it wrongly. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, thank you for the opportunity to make my maiden statement in the House. Mr. Speaker, I wish to highlight the deplorable state of road network in my constituency, that myself. I am very sure you all appreciate the need for good roads in the country, and its importance cannot be underestimated. The poor road network in the country is not a secret, and the havoc it has caused the nation is immense and immeasurable. Over the years, our attempt to tackle the problem bedeviling the road network has been fraught with challenges. Mr. Speaker, that myself, is a municipality and in my estimation has some of the worst roads in the country. The only sign of a bitumen road in the constituency is the one stretching through the principal street of the municipal capital, that's Drobo, through to Sampa. That road is over 20 years old and riddled with potholes that can cause accidents for motorists and commuters on a daily basis. Mr. Speaker, the portals on that stretch of road are deep enough to change your radio station. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, every other road in the constituency is in a terrible shape and making one of the most beautiful constituencies in the country an eyesore. Mr. Speaker, the over over 50 towns and villages connected just by four major roads in the municipal capital have not seen a third surface in their lifetime, even though all of such roads are over 100 years old. Mr. Speaker, the problem of road network is impeding the development of the people and the communities. The terrible nature of the roads have adversely affected investment in the constituency. Existing businesses are dying and new ones are hardly coming up due to the death that engulfs the whole community 
during the dry season or hammertime season. The rainy season comes with its own challenges. The potholes get filled, driving and walking even becomes difficult. Mr. Speaker, sometimes it is difficult to live in the constituency, especially when all other four municipal assemblies in the Puno region have asphaltic surfaces except Jamai South municipal, Municipality. Mr. Speaker, Jamai South contributes its fair, its fair share to the development of the nation. In fact, we are a major farming community dealing mainly in the cultivation of cocoa and cashew on a large scale. Foodstuff production is abundant. The problem is that the trucks carrying these goods many times get stuck and sometimes topple over and block the narrow roads. Mr. Speaker, on three of the four major roads in the municipality, Ghana shares a border with Ivory Coast, making the constituency an entry point to foreigners. Mr. Speaker, foreigners' first impression about the country is formed mostly at the entry point, hence the need to carve a very good and a beautiful impression for the municipality and the country. Mr. Speaker, one beautiful thing about the municipality is that most of the towns are so close by, and in most cases, less than a kilometer between them. An example is from Drobo, the municipal capital, to Kwamse Chrome, where you have Jape Chrome, Katache Chrome, Gunasia, Chromunum, Sebreni, Dodo Sio, Bano number one, Bano number two, Bano number three, and Kwamse Chrome, the border town, all on the 12 kilometer road. Mr. Speaker, Again, from Drabu to Mrema, you have Finyamifie, Asuoja, Jemjemreja, Abu Akrom, and Remano on a nine kilometer road. On the road to Atuna Batian, you have Jafe Krom, Babianiha, Konfo Krom, Bobunum, Konsia, Ebrikasu, Atuna, Pampra Krom, and Batian. The point being made here is that any attempt to get any of this stretch of road constructed is going to bring a big relief to thousands of people because none of these aforementioned towns has a population of less than 1,000. Mr. Speaker, I am happy to know that the President, in his inaugural address to the nation, spoke of this year as the year of roads. It is my hope and prayer that this year's year of road, year of roads, promise be different from what the president proclaimed last year, 2020. Yeah. I urge the state to consider, to consider as favorably in please, this year's on. budget. Hold on. Yes, I remember for Gabriel Central. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I believe the honourable member is reading a statement and the rules of the House does not require a statement to provoke any debate. You are saying that it's your prayer that this year's promise by the President that going to be the year of roads will not be the same as last year. You are provoking debate. Because if I ask you, to provide me with data on road works. How can Honorable. you support that? Because the year hasn't started. Honorable, thank you. A statement has been admitted by Mr. Speaker, and it will allow him to read it, and members can comment if you like. He has concluded. Mr. Speaker, thank you for the opportunity. Mr. Speaker, I want to repeat here. I'm happy to know that the President in his noble address to the nation spoke of this year as the year of roads. It is my hope and prayer that this year's, of, this year's year of roads promise be different from what the President promised last year, 2020. 
Mr. Speaker, I urge the state to consider us favorably in this year's budget, especially in the area of roads, so as to get the spirit of one's vibrant communities back to life. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak the minds of my constituents in the House. Thank you very much. Yes, Honorable Member for Sunyani East. Sunyani West. Sorry, Sunyani West. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, thank the maker of the statement. And to say that even though uh, his statement is more or less constituency specific, uh, having been a former regional minister of the region before, I have a fair idea as to conditions of his constituency and for that matter his municipality. The speaker, I just want to say that yes, just like many other constituencies and municipalities, a road continues to be a major challenge to many of our communities. But that notwithstanding, it is also a fact that some attempts have been made in his constituency to address the issue of roads. And I do know for a fact that if you go to Drobo, which is the German sub district capital, quite a number of roads are under construction. Apart from that, there are other major roads which are also under construction and have reached a considerable level of completion. And uh, I thought um, in being fair in the statement, uh, the maker of the statement will acknowledge that as effort by government in addressing the road conditions in his uh, constituency. He also made a statement that maybe apart from his constituency, there's no other constituency or municipality in the region which doesn't have an asphalting surface in the district capital. That is factually incorrect. The speaker, my constituency, it was hyped out of Sunyani municipality, and uh, it is the closest constituency to Sunyani. But I don't even have a single kilometer of asphalting in my district capital. So for him to have made, made a general statement that every constituency, every, every town or constituency capital in the region has an asphalting surface is, is factually incorrect. And I think that will be corrected. Mr. Speaker, I agree. I agree that road issues continue to be a major challenge in many parts of the country. But I must also admit that since the beginning of last year, when His Excellency the President declared the year of roads, many bold attempts have been made to address major road challenges in many of our communities. I can cite so many of them in my region and then in my constituency. And in his particular constituency that I can also speak of. Mr. Speaker, it's factually incorrect that the major road linking or which passes through the constituency from Brikum through Drobo to uh, was constructed some 20 years ago. Mr. Speaker, in between 2006 and 2009, uh, 20, early 2009, I was the regional minister. The road from Belvianiha through Drobo to Sampa was started during my reign as a regional minister, and it could not have been 20, over 20 years by now. So I just want to plead that whenever we are uh, making statements which will be on record, we have to be very careful and also be factually correct. Mr. Speaker, on this note, I thank the maker of this statement. Yes, honorable. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for 
the opportunity given to contribute to this statement. I would like to thank the maker of this statement. He is my neighbor. I share boundary with him. That is Jamai North. Jamai North was carved out of Jamai in 2004, the year 2004. Mr. Speaker, the situation in Jamai South is not different from the situation in Jamai North, Time, Banda, in respect of the deplorable nature of rules that we have in this concern. Mr. Speaker, when you come to these consequences and chance to ask the consequence of their urgent needs, the chorus answer that will be given is rules. The consequences of these four consequences I have mentioned are in dire need of rules. Uh, we are fortunate to have some members here who recently went to these consequences to campaign. I can boldly make mention of Honorable Osla Owusu. She went to Jamai North during the campaign era to campaign for a colleague. That is Honorable Siaka Steven, the ex-MP. She can attest to this situation. Sampa has a district capital. As of now, this district was carved from German in 2004. It will sadden you, Mr. Speaker, to know that the principal streets of Sampa are still on tap as a constituency or a district capital. Sampa, Banda, and the constituencies I have mentioned so far, and the constituencies I have mentioned so far, have a lot of resources and a lot of revenue is being taken from these areas into the national coffers. But it will sadden you to know that our roads, our roads, our roads are in the bad nature. We are praying to Mr. Speaker to speak to the national authorities. We are aware, we are aware, we are aware of a minister of road now. He's yet to face the house for approval. And I believe when his uh, nomination is approved and he becomes a substantive minister, he will work expeditiously for our roads to retire so that we can also fill our part of the national case. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Very well. I'll allow one more contribution. Uh, Honorable former minister, uh, director of highways. No. No. It's rather um, the former deputy minister for local government. I can't, I can't make you out. Very well. Oh, Kranza. Yes, please. I've forgotten that you came back to the house. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, um, I just want to make some correction here. Um, in regards to what the Honorable former regional minister said, the Honorable MP was referring to municipalities, and the last time I checked, you are, you are, your place is not a municipality. It's, it's, um, it's a district. That is um, um, Sunyane West. Yes, Honorable member for Sunyane West. Mr. Speaker, it's not a minister. My colleague on his feet. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm coming free. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, my colleague on his feet cannot profess to be more Catholic than the Pope. If he wants to talk about my constituency, my municipality, he cannot profess, uh, he cannot behave as if he knows my municipality more than my good self. Mr. Speaker, we can check the records. This House actually did approve of the municipality of Sunani West and has Obdomase as the municipal capital. So we cannot say that my area is a district. It is a municipality. I have members 
Yeah. Are you done? I thought you were contributing the debate. <laughs> Very well. I'll give the last one to you, please. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for this opportunity. I am Honorable Joseph Kwame Kuma, Kentampon North Municipality, which is the center of Ghana and Africa. Mr. Speaker, we are talk, my colleague, I thank you for bringing this issue up. Mr. Speaker, if my records are right, Metropolis, many as we have them in Ghana, have all had defeating rules. Municipalities, just like my brother, my brother's place, is a headache. Kintampo North cannot be left out. Our rules... Honorable member, yes. if you want to bring a statement on Kintampo North, please bring your own statement. Thank you, now, Mr. Speaker. If you want to contribute to the debate on German South, you may continue. Thank you. Okay. That brings us to the end of the Honorable Majority Leader, at the commencement of public business, the only item or items on public business is the presentation of a report of the committee I chair. The report is still being prepared. Yes, Leader. Mr. Speaker, because you are presiding, I believe I could present the paper. Because you are presiding, I believe I could present the paper on your behalf to the House. So we could spend some time digesting it and then perhaps to meet tomorrow over it. I think so. so item number five. Reports of the Technical Committee on the Review of the Standing Orders of the Parliament of Ghana. A report is duly presented as for distribution to members. In that case, Honorable Majority Leader, item number six cannot. Is that right? Speaker, as, as you do know, we just uh, we just submitted the the report to plenary, and they require some time to produce it. So I will plead that um, we we take this report tomorrow at the sitting of the committee of the whole to deal with it. Um, I don't know whether it should be the committee of the whole or a joint caucus because this is coming from this is a report coming from um, it's coming from a technical committee so if you should go to a committee of the whole then after the consideration the committee of the whole will have to generate a report and submit it to a plenary and that is not supposed to be the procedure so it should rather be uh, a joint caucus to consider the, the reports, and then thereafter we can come to some determination on that. Very well. In that case, can I have a motion to adjourn the House to tomorrow? And the motion is that this House takes an adjournment until tomorrow at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I shall move. Yes, I'm going to move. I have members, the motion to adjourn the House has been moved and seconded. 
All in favor of the motion say aye. aye. All against say no. The eyes of it. The House is accordingly adjourned till Thursday, February 4th, 2021, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs>